In this presentation, we will make a reversing entry related to accrued interest. Time to engage with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to start off by opening up our reports, going to the reports drop down, looking at those financial statement reports. We want that balance sheet report, so we're going to double click on it so we can get it. We're going to have period two. That's going to be February, so we'll start off there. I'm going to say OK and there is our uh, report now you'll recall in a prior presentation that we had an adjusting entry related to the uh, interest payable accrued interest in other words if we go to our loan document we looked at our loan doc document over here and we saw that uh, this this loan isn't going to be paid back to the end of five uh, periods or or six periods six months that is and after the first month we owed 250 and therefore uh, we had incurred it just like if we incurred rent and we hadn't yet paid it so we had to do an adjusting entry to record the fact that we had a payable of the interest payable and the interest expense on the other side of things now we're going to reverse that now just a quick caveat here to, to the reversing of this entry note that we could have had the same kind of thing happen on, on this loan it just depends on when you know how much of the interest was accrued where we pay it monthly right so we pay the, the, loan, the loan monthly we might have some accrued interest and you could have the similar process and the reason I point that out, I'm going to go back to this loan, is that if you have the reversing entry, it's the same kind of thing with the reversing entry. I want to make it as easy as possible on the, the difference between the accounting department and the adjusting department. So in other words, if I put in accrued interest here and then the accounting department had to make a normal type of loan payment and now they got this accrued interest on the books, well, it's already made it complex. Let's go back over here. And just imagine this situation where I had, you know, this kind of loan, the more standard kind of loan. Well, then you'd have to make the loan payment and then you'd have part of the interest, which is on the balance sheet. And then part of the interest that might be in the current period that you'd have to record. And then the principal reduction, you made an already kind of complex type of transaction for the accounting department, more complex than just writing a check, more difficult. And that's what we're going to try to avoid. So we're going to say, okay, well, let's just reverse all the adjusting entries so that when the loan payments made let's just go back onto this example then they could just do it according to the amortization table and they don't have to think about you know the accrued interest thing that's going to be the general idea now just note on this loan it's not the same kind of standard loan because we're, you're not actually going to pay it off until the end of six months and you're going to pay the entire thing off so in this case it may not be beneficial to do the reversing entry because it's not going to be something paid off till the end of the process but i just want to give an example of, of the uh, reversing entry so that it's going to be something that the loan balance, the in accrued interest could confuse things if the payment was to come up. Um, and this, it could still confuse things if it wasn't to come up. We're just going to say, hey, we're going to do the accrued interest as of the end of the period. Then we'll reverse it as of the end of the next period. And then we'll make an adjustment, you know, each time as of the end of the period to record the accrued interest. So this is what the reversing entry would be like. If we go back on over, we're going to say then that we're going to enter a reversing entry and let's just look at the the actual entry we put in place first if i go to this this 250 uh and double click on this entry what happened this is the actual entry we put in place we're just going to simply reverse it exactly as of the first day of the next period that being march 1st so i'm going to close this back out and then close this back out and then we're going to go back to our uh over here to our, our information and then I'm going to go to the tasks drop down so we can go back to our journal entry at this format and then go down to the journal of uh, the general journal entry now the general journal entry is going to be as of the first day of the following time period so it's going to be as of uh, March 1st so I'm going to go to March 1st and we'll pick up that date and I'm just going to simply reverse exactly what happened similar process as last time I'm not going to reverse the order of the account. I'm going to put 7055, which is the interest expense. I'm going to put that on top, even though I'm going to credit it because I'm going to reverse it exactly. And that's going to be the 250. I'm going to put the description of a reversing entry. And then I'm going to put the other account, which was 2420, was it? It was 24 something, I believe. Let me just double check it here. Well, let's go ahead and find it. I'm going to scroll down. It's going to be the payable account. So there it is. The interest payable, 2410. 2410, that's going to be the debit of the 250. 
All right, let's record this. I'm going to say save. And there we have it. We're going to close this back out. I'm going to go back into the balance sheet report, going into the balance sheet report and uh, scrolling down to the liabilities section. It's still there as of the end of February. Now let's go to March. So I'm going to go back up to the options up top and we're going to change the time period to uh, March. Let's go to the range and I'm going to make this March 1st to the 31st first to the 31st okay and now it's gone so you can see it disappeared let's go to the other side the income statement this is going to be a little funny looking on the income statement and so i'm going to go back on over and open up the income statement and let's look at it first for uh february i'm going to remove these tick marks i don't need the zero balances and there it is now the interest is included in the interest expense this 846 now let's change the date to March. So I'm going to select the cog up top to do so. We're going to pick the range. I'm going to change this to March, March 1st through March 31st, and then say OK. And so now all we have is this negative interest expense. And again, that, that will look funny because you wouldn't have a negative expense. Now, normally it would wash out once you make the payment so once i made the payment and again i think it's easier to see actually with this loan you're right it, once i made the payment if i was to record all the interests to to the um to the expense account then the, the two would net out and it would be correct at that point in time when we look at this loan that actual payment's going to happen at the end of of six months so if i was to make the payment at, at this point then uh the, the normal process of making the payment would be to credit cash for the uh, the 51519 and then to uh, reduce the loan balance which is going to be on the books for 50,000 and then the difference just go to the interest expense which would be 1519 would go to interest expense but I'd have to worry about that payable well if I reverse the payable I don't have to worry about it and then it'll take that 250 and apply it back to the prior period uh, in in the proper format so again it wouldn't really happen in March However, so if I was if I was to to um, do this process in March, then it's not going to happen in March. It's not going to happen for this particular loan until after six months. So just remember, on this particular loan, it may not be necessary to do the reversing entry, but just want to give a, an example of what that reversing entry uh, would look like. So I'm going to go back on on over. So there's the 250, and again, it would look funny until until the actual payment was made and then it would be proper it would net out uh, and be proper at that point in time. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.